I am a sonosaurus. In the ultrasound world, that means someone that has been doing ultrasound for more than 30 years. I've been doing it for 37 years next month, and it's been an absolutely wonderful career. And because my children have grown up, I'm now able to travel the world, attending conferences and teaching. And in any given year, I'll be away about 90 nights. Sometimes my husband and children will come with me, but otherwise they'll stay at home and I'll travel alone. And it's been absolutely wonderful. There was no such thing as a sonographer in the early days and it was only because I was at Sydney Hospital and they received Australia's first commercial grayscale system. It was meant to go into the x-ray department and there was no room, so it came into the nuclear medicine and there I was, so ultrasound found me. Back then there was no training, there was no textbooks, we had to learn as we went, we made mistakes and from then on we were able to write the textbooks, write the courses that today sonographers now have. Today in Australia it's a postgraduate diploma so they must have another Health, health science related degree, which means that they could have been a radiographer, nuclear medicine, a nurse. We get some doctors switching over, physiotherapy, sports science, quite a few other pro programs. Then they have to do two years, which is part time at either one of the universities or at ASM, and they have to be working as their training. So by the end of their two years, they have to have done about 2,000 scans. Typical day's work. At the moment, I'm doing a lot of obstetrics and gynaecology. So it's absolutely wonderful. And we might have some routine patients booked in for studies like nuchal translucency or the second trimester scan but we also get a lot of emergency work coming from the hospital, which means that patients are bleeding or they can't feel the baby move, so then we'll do the start study straight away for them. In my career, it's been the veterinary work. I'm also qualified in agriculture, and so I was very lucky enough to introduce veterinary ultrasound into Australia and so scanning sheep and cattle and horses, either their tendons or their hearts or pregnancy scanning. I think that in a specialist centre, we're able to give that little bit of extra knowledge that may not be found in the routine clinics. So they might have their scan done at the clinic down the road where a problem has been found, such as a heart defect, and they will send it to us for clarification. As I said before, there was no textbooks. We had to teach ourselves. There was no one to show us how to hold the probe. And I think today sonographers and trainee sonographers are very lucky and they've got a good base of senior sonographers to assist them showing them the best way to scan a difficult patient and to be able to hold the probe or what settings to change to be able to improve the quality of their work. Every year I keep saying it can't get any better and every year these companies are coming up with the most amazing technology and I can't see it stopping now. A few years ago I thought, that's it. But we are seeing higher resolution transducers. We are seeing some people working on 50 megahertz probes, which is just going to be amazing if it's put into the clinical sphere. I looked, I reformulated the fetal 
med uh, fetal measurement charts for an Australian population. So when a lady goes to have her baby measured, and they measure the head, the legs, the arms, now they use the ASM charts, which are the Campbell Westaway charts, and they were mine. So they were formulated along with work on ethnicity and showing the different growths between the Chinese population and the Caucasian, the Vietnamese population, and also the growth of babies with gestational diabetes. So we put out a lot of articles on that and it has changed the way of clinical practice in Australia. A sonographer needs to be able to ask questions of themselves and their training doesn't finish with that diploma. Every day they should be learning something they must have that commitment for further query and for further questioning. I've learned something every day of my working life and the day I stop learning is the day I'm going to give up.